I'm going to go over the pricing data here in just a second because it's gotten out of control with the uh, increase in prices at some of these locations. But first, I'm going to go over the update because there has been some significant progress on this project. Uh, not in open stations, though. Uh, so it, we've got 39 weeks left in the year, and they've said they, they're they going to have 200 open by the end of the year. That would be 167 less left because we've got 33 open right now. If you do the math on that, that's four per week. It's actually 4.25 per week, but I'm just using four as a round number right now. This is the Q4 2023 earnings um, slide deck slide number 10, indicating that 3,000 additional public uh, DC fast searching uh, ports or stations will be open by the end of 2024. That includes the pilot 200 times four and also EVgo native. So GM is definitely heavily investing in DC fast chargers. We are at 6.4% complete of the 500. Again, we're gonna be opening 200 if the infograph, this infograph is to be believed, we'll be opening 200 by the end of 2024 and then an additional 300 after that. Okay, so here's the update with the pricing and I said I'll go back and touch the pricing here in a little bit broader conversation. Waddy, Kentucky opened is the only site that opened in this uh, past cycle. It's in between Louisville, Kentucky and Lexington, Kentucky. It went from being spotted under construction to open in a very short amount of time. It does have a really nice canopy. And for people who are unfamiliar, I'll run a video at the end of this uh, update that shows all the canopy locations if anyone's curious to see. And again, that's the only one that has been opened. There has been several spotted under construction though. Rotterdam, New York, uh, which is south of the uh, Niagara Falls area. I'm sorry, no, Rotterdam is west of Albany. Bath is south of Niagara Falls. And then Marengo, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Ohio, is uh, northeast of Cincinnati on I-71. There was one called Burbank, Ohio, which was thought to be under construction, but I've taken it off because it's since been found to be not DC fast charger construction, but just the uh, EV go, the um, the pilot um, refresh project. Central time zone, Whiteland, Indiana has been spotted under construction. Marion, Indiana has been awarded NEVI funding and it is already under construction. I didn't mark it as highlighted because that was noted in the last update, but there's two now under construction in the state of Indiana. And those are the ones new spotted under construction. The newer news is Nevi Awards. Pilot Corp has been awarded six in Indiana, the one that I showed in Marion already under construction, and these additional five locations have all been awarded Nevi funding. So those will be coming eventually. And then there's another one in Skippers, Virginia, which is Interstate 95 in Southern Virginia, south of Richmond. For those who don't know, there's several different site designs. There's a curbside canopy called a Type A, basically butted up against the curb. There's a Type C, which is a 40 foot by 40 foot square canopy with pull through. There is a diamond shaped Type D, which conforms to whatever drive lines that are there. And then a Type E, which is the same thing as a Type E, except reversed. And then there is the extension of the gas canopy as a type EX. Uh, so several different options. Plus there are a few locations that don't have any canopies whatsoever. Again, I'll run a slide deck at the end of this update showing all the locations. And there has been some progress in the Weed, uh, California location that I'll show in that slide deck. But the Pricing is really what is of concern. And before I go over the pricing of the stations that, as I have it, I want to mention that General Motors customers are told that they are going to be receiving discounted charging rates at these stations. We have yet to receive the details of those discounts, but I think that's going to be increasingly important because as the Tesla supercharger network opens up, and other prices are starting to creep up as well. There's gonna be more options. And I'm thinking what's gonna happen is the high price for non-GM customers is going to just kind of quietly discourage people and keep congestion from happening at these locations. And these locations will become quasi-native GM charging locations. 
Uh, we'll see. But uh, the amenities are extensive. I mean, they've got food. They've got uh, clean, very clean restrooms. If you look at the check-ins and plug share, people refer to clean restrooms. That's been my experience as well. These are very clean facilities. They're open 24-7, 365. They never close. And uh, they have Wi-Fi that spills into the parking lot because as truck stops, they provide Wi-Fi to the people who are doing long-haul trucking. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the pricing. So I saw one, let me see if I could find it, right here. Joplin, Missouri, 70 cents per kilowatt hour. That is very high. I was on a live stream with someone who has been a part of operating a CPO in New York this past week, and the demand charges are really frightening. And without subsidies, apparently it's near difficult to turn a profit. And if you're not operating a convenience store just trying to sell electrons, it's near impossible. But 70 cents, so I guess the pricing from the utility in this location required them to overprice what they're charging. And I guess there's going to be some kind of regulations for demand charges for CPOs at some point. But I think they believe this is accurately reflecting their cost uh, for the electricity with a little bit of markup. I'm not quite sure the Equinox involved here. But again, the uh, person who was running the CPO was saying that with demand charges being what they are, if you just run the numbers, it's a pretty high rate. So I think that's what we're looking at is just very generic markup on a product uh, being put out by Pilot Corp. And you see there's variable rates here. The strange thing is Springfield, Missouri, which is also on Interstate 44 in the same state, just a little bit further up, is 60 cents per kilowatt hour, which is still high, but it's not obscenely high like the 70 cents per kilowatt hour. And if you're an EVgo customer and you pay, I pay, um, I think it's $18 a month for the highest uh, level of EVgo membership for discounted rates, I normally get somewhere between 25 cents per kilowatt hour and 35 cents per kilowatt hour, depending on the time of use rate. That does not extend here. The only thing that will extend here is the free charging. If you buy a Altium car and have two years of free at EVgo, that will extend here. And the upcoming yet to be announced discount for GM customers. So this is very high. Let's see, there's 60, 59, 60, whoops, I'll fix that in a second. Um, 60, 59. So basically it's between 50 cents per kilowatt hour and 70 cents per kilowatt hour. Probably averaging, if you look at this, right around 60 cents. I should probably calculate an average, but there are a couple in here that are per minute because some states forbid, and it's not really the state also, it's the utility that is providing the electricity. They forbid uh, the sale of electricity by kilowatt hour. So you have to do it by minute in certain locales until the uh, laws change. But 94 cents per minute. Um, so I have also heard and I, I have neglected to record that in certain locations there's also a session fee. So for people with small batteries, that's not very fair. If you have a large 200 kilowatt our battery and you're able to pull electrons above 200 kilowatts for a long duration, it makes sense to do a per minute because you could actually save money that way. Uh, this uh, equates down to about, um, I think, 45 cents per kilowatt hour, depending on your uh, kilowatt charging rate. But still, if you're on a Bolt TV or something, it's very expensive to go per minute. Anyway, as far as these large CPOs out there, I don't know of any CPO out there that's charging these rates. Even EVgo themselves does not approach these rates, and I'm not quite sure the rationale behind this. And I can only speculate. The reason is they've done the math on what it would take in order to earn a little bit of profit, similar to their sale of gasoline, uh, and they've decided not to take a... Um, cost in order to provide this service, basically selling electrons at less than what they're purchasing from the electric company for. And again, that's associated with demand charges. And if you don't know what a demand charge is, it's a long conversation. Just look it up. There's plenty of um, information on the internet about demand charges and demand charge regulation. 
um, in order to alleviate electric vehicle charging uh, from being affected so heavily. So anyway, I'm going to roll the Canopy slide deck. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, sorry for the bad news. I guess if you're a GM customer, it's somewhat good news because that means that these stalls will not be heavily utilized. And uh, you'll be given a kind of a quasi-private club feel at a discounted rate for a very premium charging location along interstates. And as I said, they've got very clean restrooms. They've got the travel centers. They've got uh, food, um, free Wi-Fi, and they're open 24-7 365. So that's a pretty sweet deal right there. Anyway, thanks for watching.